Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So I'm doing a spare of the moment type of video. I wasn't planning on really doing this, but I thought like, why not? So I wanted to talk about or just tell you the skills that I learned in my last nursing class. So last semester I took med surge two, which the clinical was in like the med surge floor. Um, we did a shadow experience in the um, ambulatory setting and also the OR. I actually got to see um, an open heart surgery, so that was cool. I think the surgery was a aortic valve replacement. So it was cool to see it at first, but like after a few, after like the first hour, I was just like, okay, I'm bored. Cause you can't get like really up close uh, to see the heart, you have to stay far away um, where the um, circulating nurse is doing her documentation. So you really just have to be out of the way of the sterile field and you can't get up close and personal, unfortunately. But that's just the way they do it. That's how you prevent infection. So with that class, we had lecture twice a week. Um, we had clinical, which was from 7.30 to... 12 or 1 and then we had seminar or lab um, right after it so it was a very long day thankfully lab for me this semester is separated so it's not as long but still pretty long and in lab that is where we would learn the skills and get checked off so this is the bag that they had us buy um, it has all the equipment to practice our skills it was about, I believe, $80. So in my bag right now, um, this didn't come with the bag, obviously. Um, this is my steth stethoscope case. I bought this from allheart.com. I got the case and the stethoscope. So this is my stethoscope that I used. I don't remember how much I paid. I think it might have been almost 200 or like 150 dollars for this plus the case i think that's how much it was and then in here which i bring these to my clinicals i also have uh scissors i have my watch because you need a second hand watch while you're at the clinical um i have the eye pen or light pen whatever you want to call it i need to get one that has the measurements right here but i kind of just eyeball it and guess my measurement a sharpie for labeling um when they have wounds if they have a dressing on top of it you would have to label the date and then also who changed it so your initials a red pen like i never use the red pen during clinical because everything is pretty much on computer now but if you use papers to document if you need to correct something, you have to scratch it out or one line with a red pen and then put your initials next to it. And then a highlighter for whatever reason. Then I also have a little notepad that I would keep with me and bring to clinical so I could write down notes about my patients. And normally as well, I would have a... Um, a pamphlet that tells me all the information I need to get on the pamphlet on the patient so that way I know what I need to document when I get home because our assignments usually after we get back from clinical it's to do a nursing care plan and for me I take forever to finish it I take so long it, if I did it all in one shot honestly it probably takes me like four or five hours just to do one care plan. So one of the skills we learned was how to um, pass meds through an ET tube. Um, this is just an irrigation tray with a bulb syringe. So this is just a syringe to where you put the distilled water and then also the medication. You would crush the medication because you can't put whole medications through this. Well, 
you crush them as long as they can be crushed. If they cannot be crushed, then you would need to see if there's a different form, like liquid, or if there is a crushable option. So you would just hook this into the tube. You would first put like 10 cc's of water, then you would put some of the medication in there, then 10 cc's more of water, more medication, 10 cc's of water, because you don't want to put all the medication in at one time, especially if there's a lot of medication, because the tubing could get clogged, then you're going to have like a backflow. And so sometimes I think you can also use this and push into it because the tube is just going through the stomach or you could also I haven't seen it done but I think you can use like coca-cola to help break down the clogness of it <laughs> and this is my blood pressure cuff I also got this on all heart I don't bring this well I bring I brought this with me when I did long-term care clinicals but I but the hospital <clears throat> I went to last semester they have their own machines so I just do it electronically while this one is manual so sometimes I'll use my grandma to practice blood pressure medications which I'm probably gonna have to use her again soon because it's been a minute so another skill that we learned was how to put in a catheter urinary catheter and how to take out one this right here i believe is just a straight calf this isn't one that would stay in all the time this is one that you would just insert it get as much urine out and then take it out and obviously when they put these inside the urethra um they're gonna put lube onto the edges so that way it's not like you know dry piece of elastic sticking up there <laughs> so that's the straight calf um this is the fully catheter so some hospitals will have like the package with all the items inside it already but i think some hospitals may still have them separately so you need to know everything that you're going to need for that patient and have it ready on the um next to the bedside and when you're putting in a catheter you're using sterile technique because inserting it up uh, the urethra could lead to infections and you don't want that. So if you contaminate anything, you have to start all over again. So this package just comes with swabs um, to clean the urethra area um, and the whole perineal area. This is just, if you need to send a sample to the lab, you would put it in this. Um, this is the syringe to uh, inflate the bulb or bubble, whatever you want to call it, um, while it's inside the patient's bladder. And the lube, of course. So this is what the indwelling catheter looks like this is the collection bag that holds the urine and you do have to document how much the patient is urinating and then this is where you could get a sample from the patient All right so this is the tubing that actually does go in the urethra so this piece right here is where you would attach the syringe and quickly I'm just going to show what the balloon looks like when it's um sitting in your bladder so it's going to be right here so that is with five cc's which cc's is also a milliliter so one cc is one milliliter that's only with five milliliters it's always scary to put this in because I don't want this to bust in my face. Woo. Okay. So that's what it looks like with 10 cc's. And then when you're removing the catheter, you would just insert the empty syringe and pull the liquid out. 
it, you would want to tell them to kind of take a deep breath and bear down so the catheter does come out and usually it just fall out i was luckily able to actually take out an indwelling catheter um with the assistance of my clinical instructor which i was obviously very nervous because it's like the first time doing it but it was actually very easy honestly it just slipped right out as gross as that may seem <laughs> that is the indwelling catheter fun exciting stuff Next we have dressing change. So we learned how to do a wound dressing. Um, what comes from this is just a pad to put underneath the patient. This is the part of the dressing. This is the gauze pad that you would insert if you had like a deep wound. It would either be dry or if it, it would be a wet dressing depend, depending on the doctor's orders. Normal saline, wrap, little pair of shears if you need it, and this is just a tool on how you could measure, um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see this, how you would measure the wound, because when you're changing the dressing on a wound, you're not only like changing the dressing obviously but you're also measuring it knowing the color if there's any discharge if there's any smell to it um and you're also measuring it so the length the width and the depth so if there's a pressure ulcer in their sacrum then you're measuring that all right so this skill was probably the more nerve-wracking one for me i don't know why it seems so complicated but I know in time that as you do it more and more that it, you are going to get more comfortable and you're going to be like, why was I so nervous to do this? But this is a tracheostomy care kit. So tracheostomy is just a kind of like a tube that goes into your um, pharynx to help let you breathe. So this kit is just the trach cleaning kit. So it just has the... I think this is called the irrigation tubing or no it's called a catheter just kidding this is the catheter that you would use to clean out the tracheostomy so a lot of times people that have a trach in secretions will build up in their in their throat or their pharynx um, and so this is how you're gonna hook it up to a suction and then you insert it into the trach and you kind of just like swivel it swivel it around and so that sucks up the built up of secretion so that you can hopefully breathe better and not as much like mucus is there so we learned cleaning the trach and then we learned the suctioning so we also learn how to do injections so we learn how to do intradermal injections um so that would be like your ppd or allergy testing we learned um sub q injection so that could be like your lovinox your blood thinners um and then we also learned intramuscular which is like your flu shots and so we had to learn the technique on how to give that shot and we also have to learn the gauge and the sizes of the needles and also um how many milliliters are in the syringe that you need so with learning how to do injections, we also got little vials of liquid that we could practice on. And this is also a powder. So we learned how to mix powder into whatever um, it needs to be mixed with, like distilled water, sterile water, normal saline, whatever. And now in clinical, I did get to do two types of injections, Was which was... Very exciting and nervous all at the same time. Um, I did an IM injection, which was a flu vaccine. And then I also did a Lovenox shot. But that's pretty much my first time, I think, inserting a needle into someone. And it's not as scary as you think. 
you know it's really quick to be honest another skill that we learned was how to do a central dressing change so they would have these um i think they're called like pick lines or triluminal um like catheters so one could be for like to getting blood or putting in medication or for um i think par parenteral nutrition could also be one and so we would have to learn how to clean and flush those catheters and i'm pretty sure i'm missing a lot of the skills that we did learn last semester but i'm just kind of going through what i got in this bag which it is the majority of what we learned in med search too and lastly which is actually the first thing that we learned um, last semester was how to set up a peripheral line and how to set up the IV IV tubing and the IV bags so this is a primary bag they just came with normal saline in this bag um, you have to put a label onto the back of the packaging and you have to state the time, the date, and the flow rate. Um, and these bags are only good for um, 24 hours and then they would have to be replaced. Now the IV tubing on the other hand is good for I believe it's 96 hours which is about four days. But that also depends on your hospital policy. Some hospitals would be three days or 72 hours. And this is a secondary bag. This normally would have something like medication inside it. And also a very easy skill, but something about it just really throws off people. And I think we over exaggerate the difficulty of everything that we learn because there is so much pressure on us but they do try to make us like as comfortable as possible when we do perform those skills in clinical. Oh I do remember one more thing that we did. We learned how to do um, pass out medications so I did give medications to most of my patients last semester. So we learned the three checks, um, which is three checks that you do before actually giving the patient the medication. So it is the five rights. So right patient, right medication, right dose, right time, and right route. You have to check that at least three times. So once in the medication room, once you have the medications, and then at the bedside. Okay, so I think that's all I'm going to go through today in this video. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I know this isn't my usual video and most of you are probably going to come from looking up nursing and not from makeup. My normal videos are usually makeup related, but I'm in nursing school and so this kind of maybe just helps me understand a lot more so you know if you're able to teach it then you know the material and I don't know if I want to do like these type of videos regular regularly until I am like completely comfortable with demonstrating skills so I'm not sure if there are gonna be many videos like that from me but maybe just maybe my journey in nursing i will put out updates but the whole educating and teaching thing i don't know it's not my forte all right yeah so that is it for this video thank you guys so much for watching and if you haven't already please give me a like and subscribe to my channel and i will see you guys in the next one bye guys